Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we've got a debut on the channel for a constructor called Rodolfo Kirchen from Argentina. Um, Rodolfo describes himself in his email as being a puzzle inventor from Argentina, which is fantastic. Um, and this puzzle, I think, is about pentominoes, which gives me an excuse to colour things in. So I'm delighted about that. And the testing reports say this is a really cool puzzle and quite approachable. Uh, so we ought to be in, as usual, for a treat. Um, do I have anything to tell you about beforehand? No, not really. The only thing I would um, appeal to your uh, kindness regarding is if you... Uh, if you do enjoy the channel, please consider subscribing. We are heading up towards this magic number of 400,000 subscribers. Uh, and when we get there, Mark and I are going to be making a video answering uh, questions from the community. So if you do have a question for us, uh, do email it to us at crackingthecryptic at gmail.com. Or you can tweet it to us actually at, at cryptic cracking. That's our Twitter handle. Um, and then hopefully one day soon we'll get to make that video, which would be terrific. Um, and that's all. So let's get on with the rules of this one. What are they? We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. Um, it's not got a name, by the way. It's just called Pentomino Sudoku. So normal Sudoku rules apply. Divide the grid into 16 pentominoes such that each small digit in the corner of a cell is the sum of the digits in its pentomino and the central cell is not in any pentomino. Okay, so we've got to... Okay, I can do the maths of that because if we're dividing a grid of 81 cells, for that is indeed how many cells there are in a Sudoku, into 16 pentominoes, that's 16 times 5 is 80, plus one cell in the middle, we will get 81. So we're dividing the grid into 16 pentominoes. Um, the white cells in the grid must be divided into exactly 12 pentominoes one of each possible pentomino type. Digits cannot repeat within a pentomino. Right, golly. So, right, I see what's going on here. We've got some grey L pentominoes in the perimeter. And then the rest of the grid, apart from the central cell, is all white. So these, presumably, we're left with 60 cells in white, which we are. I can see the maths of that. Um, because if we divide, if we take, we've got four pentominoes here, which are going to be 20 cells, plus that is 21 cells, so 81 minus 21 is 60. So in, in the middle white bit, we've got to put 12 different pentominoes of all the different types of pentomino. Now, what does that mean? Well, for example, that is a pentomino, and that is a different pentomino from, I don't know, that. You can see these are different shapes, but it is not a different pentomino from this. Uh, let me do it in the white space. That would be more sensible uh, because obviously this is just a rotation of that. Similarly, that pentomino is again going to be the same as that. The 12 different pentominoes are going to have to be actually different shaped regions, i.e. not the same shape after rotation or reflection. Um, and uh, I suspect that's true because I know that there are 12 different types of pentomino if you don't allow rotations and reflection, reflections to be the same. Um, so, and then digits cannot repeat within... All right, okay, so what we've got here is basically a whole load of killer Sudoku cages, isn't it? So we're going to have to divide the grid into killer Sudoku cages and then if we made this one, I don't know, that shape, we would know that these cells here added up to 30 and without repeating a digit. Yeah, so these are going to become killer Sudoku. So it's sort of a pentomino, then killer Sudoku problem, although it might be, we might have to do a bit of killer Sudoku before we finish the pentominoes. Who knows? Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, and I've got given digits today a plenty. Look, seven given digits. That is a rarity indeed. And None of those, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? None of the digits I've been given have actually repeated. So there's not much to Sudoku we can do at the start. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right, okay, okay. So each small clue in white belongs to its own pentomino. 
Yeah, I was just wondering whether there was any repeated numbers. There are. Look, I found a repeated 23. But no matter how I try and do this, I don't think I'm going to be able to connect these together. So these are not part of the same pentomino. I don't know if that was possible from the rules, but they're, they're not anyway. So each, each of these digits here is its own pentomino. So we've basically just, I think what we've got to do is just divide the grid, the white areas into, into regions, which suggests color, doesn't it? So that those have to be in the same because otherwise they're going to overlap with these two. Um, let's put some blues in there and some greens in there, look. So that seems to all be forced. That one is trapped in by these, these, these two other pentominoes. So it's got to come out that way. That one, I'll make that yellow, shall I? I think, yeah, I can see that's different. Oh, hang on, hang on, 35. Well, that's got to be a five, six, seven, eight, nine pentomino because that's the only way of getting as high as 35 with five different numbers. So this pentomino here, although we don't have a clue about what it actually is, uh, no, not sure. <laughs> Let's come to this one. That's got to poke out. This has got to poke. Oh, that's got to poke out three uh, because it's got to, because this is going to have to come out two. Um, okay, let's carry on down here. That's going to come out two. I could probably get away with yellow for that one. Let's go red for that, those two. Oh, a 34. Well, that's very similar to a 35. So this is very nearly forced. This is going to be, well, it is forced in terms of it's got to be four, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, so this one, depending on what it looks like, might be impacted by these. This one's got to poke out like that. Let's make that purple. That's got to be yellow. Uh, okay, if we've done all of the easy I think we've done all the, of the easy pentomino growth and now presumably we've got to think about well I'm trying to think about what to think about I think probably the easiest thing to think about is going to be to think about difficult pentominoes to place and the classic one is, is the X so the pentomino that looks like this normally in puzzles where you have to tile pentominoes is a very restrictive one and here here it looks like a very good shout that that's going to be where we start because none of these can be an X. You know, you can't put X there or it's going to overlap with the green. Um, that can't be an X. That can't be. That can't be. That one can't be. Ah, this one can be. That could be an X like this. The 24 could be an X. The 22 can't be an X. Oh, Bobbins, the 30 can be an X as well. I was about to say we're, we're off and running, but this 30 here... Uh, that can also, so one of these two is the X, but not both of them. Obviously, that's going to give you a problem with this little cell if both of them were an X. Um, okay, so sounds like there's a war going on on a trampoline outside. Um, so maybe it's not X. Z can often be quite a tricky one. Let's have a think about Z. Um, no, Z is a Z is a dreadful choice with this pattern, actually, because Z you can just put it almost anywhere. Look, yeah, literally almost anywhere. Sorry, that's Z can sometimes be useful, but not in this puzzle. Um, I is the other one. I'm just wondering about the I, which is a straight line like this. But again, that could be an I, that could be an I. I know I is not a sensible choice. So I'm not doing very well at identifying which pentomino I'm meant to be focusing on here. You, you can't be, you can't be in any of those. You can't be, ah, you can be, ah, no, you can't be here. I was about to say you can be the 24, but it can't be. Because how could this be part of a U pentomino? A U pentomino, by the way, is that shape. It looks like a U. Clues in the question. Well, if this was a U, it would go like that. And now the 23 is, is 
limited to only being three cells, so that doesn't work. And if you do it that way, you lock, you lock the 22 into place. So this one, this one, and this one all can't be you either. That can't be you. It's going to interrupt that gray region. That can't be a you. The, ah, no, no, this is good. I think, yes, it's this one. Right, let's keep going and just justify why I think it's this one. This can't be a U because the 23 is now only four cells large. That can't be a U. The 35 is one cell large. These just, it's impossible for them to be used. So the 35 is a U. And the 35 can't go that way. It can't actually look like a U or that cell is broken. So this is going to have to be a corner of the U, which means I can do these two cells. And it's either going that way or it's going this way. Um, which means this cell is going to be... I think this cell is going to have to belong to the 27, but I'm not absolutely certain about that. Ah, no, no, no. Right. Simpler, simpler, simpler. Now that's not an X, clearly, because it need, if it was an X, it would need to take those squares, and it can't. So that, that means this one is the X, I think. And then we have our first pentomino. That's pushing the purple up one. Um, 23... Ah, yeah, beautiful. Right, so the 23, which now needs exactly one more cell. So it's either taking this cell or this cell. Well, let's look at this cell and see why this is broken. Now, this 22 can take two more cells to become a pentomino, but then this cell is going to be isolated and can't join any pentomino. So this is Rogan. That is not right. That must be orange. Now we've got an N pentomino here. That's got to be part of a pentomino, and that's the final pentomino. And now we've got an F here, an N, and an X that we've got given. Okay. Um, now that square can't possibly belong to anything apart from the 30, so that turns yellow. That square also can't, it just can't be reached by another pentomino apart from yellow, which means that square is also yellow. And now we've got a, well, it's a P pentomino that's being rotated in order to become a D, what looks like a D, but that, that is in classic pentomino parlance, definitely a P pentomino. <laughs> um, Peter Piper, Peter Peck of Pickle Webbers. Um, now, what have we got there? The 23 needs to grow. And it's going to take one. Ah, okay, yeah. Yes, this is nice. The 23 needs to grow. Well, it can't take this as its final square, or it will be an N, and it, it will have a duplicate. So it's going to be a W and take this one. Those have to join to red and create a T. This one and this one are now part of the same pentomino. And presumably that joins to this, does it? Because... Yeah, it can't get to those and it can't get to that without hiving this off. So this is now an L. That's a bit difficult for me to see, though. Maybe I need to change the color of the... I'm going to change the color of the green one here, I think, to orange, just to make that a bit... It's not brilliant, but uh, I can see it slightly better. I might change that one now to green. I don't know what... I'm, I actually don't think I'm improving things very much here. I was going to change that one to green as well. Um, so, what have we got left to go? I've, oh, good grief, I've still got to put an eye in. Uh, no, it can go there. Oh, thank goodness for that. I thought I'd broken the puzzle. Um, because I could see I couldn't do any eyes horizontally. But this one is going to save me. That's going to be the eye, I think. Now, the, oh, this was the U, wasn't it? So... Yes, okay. We've got an F over here. So we can't go there with the blue. Otherwise, we're going to get a second F with the red. So this is wrong. And I must go that way for the 35. Now that creates a Y, which we haven't had yet. Um, I've not had a Z either. Oh, I see. Yes, okay. So we've got to add two to that, which must be those two squares. And then we finish off with that, which is the Z. Um, so there we go. We've trialed the grid. That was actually quite a lot of fun. Um, and now, presumably, I've got some sort of weird killer Sudoku to do, which is going to be... 
just wondering, ah, oh, I suppose I start with a 35, do I? That's got to be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we can take 6s out of there and 8 out of here. And we can do the same thing down there. That's got to be 6, 7, 8, 9. That's not 7 or 8. That's not 7. Have we got any other given cages where we're going to be able to write in the options? Yes, we've got a 15 cage in 5. Well, that's going to have to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, that means those squares are not 5. So there's definitely a 5 in one of those three cells. Um, right, now I'm tempted. I can see I can get this cell. So maybe that's what we do next. So how can we get this cell? Well, we can use the secret. I only tell the secret to my favorite people, but you're among them. So I'm happy to let you in on it. Uh, what is the secret? Well, if I ask you, what does a complete column of a Sudoku sum to? Because we know the column will contain all of the digits from one to nine once each, we just add up the digits one to nine. If you do that, you get 45. So what does that tell us the final four columns of this puzzle add up to? Well, that must be four times 45, that's 180. But here, look, I know the value of almost all of the cells in the final four columns just by adding up the pentomino numbers. So if I add up these highlighted cells, I'm going to get some number that is less than 180. And that cell is going to um, basically bring up the difference. So let's do this. We've got uh, 57 there. 64, 84, 103, 136. Um, oh, there's that one there as well. 136, 151, 173, which means that square needs to be 7 in order to bring the total for these columns up to 180. This is always slightly terrifying when you're adding up a lot of numbers in a video, because if I've done my mental arithmetic wrong, that is going, you know, that, this is going to propagate through the puzzle and make me look like a prized Charlie. Um, let us hope that that does not happen. Right, now I'm interested in this box, I think. Maybe the secret on this box, because I've got 22 in those squares, plus 5 and 7 for definite. So that's 34, which means I need 11 from the other two cells, one of which is a 6 or a 9 which means this square is a two or a five. Oh, it's not a five. I've just put a five in there. So that's a two. That's nice. Uh, I feel I feel that logic did seem to make sense to me. So now, now I've got definitely got 14. So now I need a nine in there along with, so there's no six in here. And there's definitely no eight either, which means these two squares are, are a six and an eight. Now where do I put 9 in column uh, 6? Only in that cell. Let's get rid of some of the corner pencil marking here and see what's what. I've got 11 now in this 27 cage. So these are adding up to 16. Uh, no, I don't really like the look of that, to be honest. Um, I can't see how to sort of divide the, ge the geometry of these two boxes very cleanly in order to identify more magic. Um, although maybe box nine might be worth a look because let's just check this. Yeah, these these cells, these 10 cells here add up to 55. So 55 plus whatever you put in that square, let's say this was a one, then these would have to add up to 11 to bring this total for the box down back down to 45 again. So one here causes five here. Two would cause six here, so that's not possible. Three would cause seven here. Four would cause eight here. And five would cause, whoopsie, would cause nine here. Uh, are any of those digits problematical for some reason? Don't know is, is, the, is the honest answer. Um, no, maybe this is not where we're meant to look. Uh, let us have a look for something else. We could have a look at... 
We've got 31 in this corner. 35. Ah, oh yeah, this is nice. Wow, that's a 6. Because look, that's 31 in those 5 cells, plus 4 is 35. These 3 cells have to add up to 10. So if I put 9 or 8 in this square, these squares have to be either adding up to 1 or adding up to 2. Either way, it won't work. So that's a 6. And this must be a 1, 3 pair because it can't double to it. And now that, ah, now that's just got rid of 5 and 7 from this square because we're going towards the higher numbers in this position. Which is nearly interesting. That can't be 3 anymore. What about those two squares then? We've now got 13 here, so these are adding up to 10, and they're not 1, 9, or 3, 7, so they're either 4, 6, which would be this way round, or they're 2, 8, which would be that way round, or in other words, either way round. <laughs> um, 8, yeah, this is it, look, done it, 8 here, it's got to go vertical, so that can't be 2, 8. And it must be 4, 6, and we can just fill it in. So that's 6, that's 4. There's a 6 up here. There's a 4 over here. Um, and... Just wondering if we could have done... I don't think I can quite use sort of box logic on box 4. There's a bit too much sticking in and out of it for it to be very pleasant to do that. It's got to be a six in one of those cells. Uh, ah, I know what I can do. I know what I can do. Look at the first four rows of the grid and haven't I got the opportunity to do an immense maths exercise again? I think I do. This square is sticking in. So if I add up all of the rest of this, let's do this slowly. So we, should we start at the top or start here? We'll start at the top. We've got 43. Uh, 65, 100, 130, uh, 130, 152, 179. Therefore, if I've not missed out anything, this square has got to be a 1 to bring us up to 180 for those rows. That's lovely. That gets me a 1 and a 3. 3 gets plonked into one of those squares. Um, not sure if I can see anything else particularly useful there. 22 here, maybe box 1. 20 and, 20 and 22 is 42. So this has to be quite a big digit, actually. Oh, yeah, no. Well, yes. <laughs> yes, it does. Because I can't even put low numbers in here, i.e. I can't put a number that's got a 1 in it because of this one. In fact, the minimum I could make this is a 2 and a 3. And if it's not 2 and 3, it's got to be at least 7. If that's 7, because and I say it's got to be at least 7 because it's going to have to be 2 and 5, because you can't use 4. If that's 7, then these three cells would add up to 15. 15 and 20 is 35, and this would have to be a 10. That does not work. This has to be 2, 3. That's lovely, especially as there's a 3 there. So I know where the 3 goes, and I know where the 2 goes, therefore. And therefore, I've got a 2 down here. Look, I've not got a 2 there. And now I'm going to get this digit, because now what I'm doing is I'm deducting 5 from 22. So I've got 17 there, plus 20 is 37. This square is an 8. That gets me my 8 and my 6. This is a lovely puzzle, isn't it? It just flows very smoothly with some beautiful logic. That's not a 6 anymore. Now, what have I got here? I've got 15. So these squares are adding up to 8. So they've definitely got a 1 in them. So either 1, 2, 5 or 1, 3, 4. 6 here means that's 9. So this now is a 7, 8 pair. 7 is in one of those three cells. As, as in fact is 8, look. Those squares have got to be 5, 7 and 8. There's an 8 here. Beautiful. So that's an 8. This is a 5, 7 pair. That's going to give us this digit now. Um, by virtue of maths. 21, that's got to be a 3, I think, to make 24. 3 is not in those cells. 
3 is therefore there in the 15 cage. Um, okay, so 3 is in... Uh, it would be very useful if I could lock 3 in there, because then this I would know what this, this cage's composition is. 3, oh yeah, let's just carry on with Sudoku though. That's a 3 by Sudoku. Is that in a useful K position? No, I'm not sure it is. Okay. Um, two, three, six, and four. No, I can't do that. Nine. Where does nine go in box seven? It's got to go in that pair. So that's an eight, nine pair. That's a one, five pair at the top. So those squares are adding up to nine. These two squares have got to add up to 11 and they can't be 5, 6 or 3, 8 or 4, 7. So they, these two squares are 2, 9 and there's a 9 here. So that's a 9, that's a 2, that's a 6, that's a 4 and that's a 7 if all of that's correct. Which means that that's a 7. This is a 5-9 pair, which means this is a 5 and this is a 1. That's no longer a 1. Now, ah, oh yeah, here we go. So this, these three cells are adding up to 8. And now we can't use the 1, 2, 5 option because this square would simultaneously have to be a 2 and a 5. And this is not a Schrodinger cell. There are no such things as Schrodinger cells in Sudoku. So this is 1, 3 and 4 in some order. And the three, we know, has to be there, therefore. So that is three. That's a one. That's a four. And we are cooking with gas today. Now, two, five, and nine. We can do that as well. That's nine. That's five. I don't believe this. Now, this square's got to be a one. Oh, I thought that square had to be a one as well, because I didn't scan right to the end until I, got, I thought I'd made a mistake. But that looks like it's a three. Right, what are these squares then? Four, six, and eight. Ah. Which is nearly interesting. Look, we can get rid of six from that one and eight from that one. Um, now, what have we got in this cage? We've got 30 cage in which we've already put 16. So these have to add up to 14 and not use a nine. So they are six and eight. And we know which the order is. So that's eight and that's six. Get rid of the eights from there. Um, this square is now known to be a two which means that's a two. These are a four, five pair. There's a four here. Yep, that's getting me my five, seven. Putting a seven in the middle of the grid, putting a one here. Ones are in one of those two squares. Those squares are four, five, and seven. Whoops, four, five, seven. That's not seven. Um, and these squares are one, two, and nine. I'm not sure if I can limit those enough for them to be useful. This digit would be a useful digit, wouldn't it? Oh, hang on, look, I've got four, five, six down. Ah, that's a five naked single. It sees four, six in the row. So this is a four, six pair. Those two squares have got to be a two, five pair. So they're five and this is two, which means two is in one of these, these two cells. Um, Oh, I know what I can do. This 19 cage is basically done. You can see it needs a 4 in it in order for it to add up. So that's going to be a 4. That's going to be a 6. That's going to be a 4. Those two squares are now known. Uh, I'm just checking. They're 1 and 6, which I can fill in, and it's not breaking anything. So that's good. So that means we've got a 2, 9 pair up here. We've got a 6 here, so that pl plonks 6 up there. 4, 8 is not quite resolved. Um, oh, and this 4 was having an impact with that cell, wasn't it? So now we should be able to work this cell out because we've got 55, 59. We need 14 into those squares. So that's got to be an 8 to make the maths work, which gives us an 8 and a 4 at the top. Um, that's not a 4. This is a 4. 5 and 7 might not be resolved, but this is a 5, 7 or 9, and it sees 5. So that's, oh no, that's not, that's not done it. That's a 7 or a 9. What about this 22 cage then? We've got, at the moment, we've got 15 in it. 
So those two squares have got to add up to seven. They're not one six, they're not three four, so they are two five, and that will finish the puzzle, I think. Five, seven go in there. Five and nine up here. Two and nine go in there. That means this square ought to be a seven. That's seven and eight. Eight and nine. We need to put a nine in this, we need to put a three in it. Ta-da! Yes! That was gorgeous. That was just a lot of fun. It wasn't brutally hard today, but sometimes puzzles don't have to be brutally hard to be just, you know, a great way to spend half an hour of your time. Um, I really enjoyed that. It's sort of two puzzles in one. You have to do the pentomino division, which was not monstrously hard. And one thing I liked about it was it didn't require great look ahead. Some of these pentomino tiling puzzles that I've done in the past, you know, you've got to sort of put in six pentominoes in order to see where the break might happen. Here, we just had to think sensibly about difficult to place pentominoes. And from there, it, they all slotted together quite nicely, which was, which was fun and enjoyable. Um, and then after that, what did we do to really break into the killer stoku? Well, yeah, there was a bit of the secret using, wasn't there? And these top four columns and the, and the final four, sorry, four, top four rows and the final four columns. Um, and I'm not sure what else I did. I think I did something reasonably useful. Yeah, this 31 cage and that four limiting this cell was huge. That just seemed to blow the puzzle open, to be honest. Uh, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing if that happens occasionally. So Rodolfo, very nice indeed. I hope you enjoyed watching me uh, make my way through that. Uh, and I hope you all enjoyed the puzzle yourselves. Let me know in the comments. I do enjoy them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>